Live from Case at 12, the night beat starts right now. A Grand Princess cruise ship passenger tests positive for COVID-19 while in quarantine at Joint Base San Antonio Lackland. A spokesperson for the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services said the patient, an American, was taken off the base and is being treated at, quote, a Texas health care facility. Health officials have not yet revealed the name of that facility. The patient is the first person to test positive among the 149 cruise ship evacuees now quarantined here in San Antonio. This after the San Antonio Metropolitan Health District confirmed a second travel related case of coronavirus in San Antonio. We were able to confirm earlier this afternoon the patients being treated at Methodist Hospital. We're also told the patient who does have a history of underlying health conditions tested positive following a visit to Japan. He is not connected to any of the groups of cruise ship evacuees and we want to remind you travel related infection is not the same as community spread, meaning that virus was not transferred here in San Antonio. We have also learned tonight President Donald Trump has tested negative for coronavirus. That's according to the president's personal physician. The White House released the test results today after the president told reporters he had taken the test following days of resisting. This despite the fact the president had multiple direct and indirect contacts with people who have since tested positive for the virus, including three people he spent time with last weekend at his Mar-a-Lago club in Florida. We'll have continued coronavirus coverage coming your way in just a few minutes. But first, turning to other top stories, San Antonio police didn't have to look far to find two suspects who led officers on a short chase this afternoon. That's because it ended right at their substation downtown on Frio Street. The night team's Jaffney Gray has more on how it all started. Flattened tires, or lack thereof, are just a part of the consequences of this driver's actions that sparked a police chase. We had suspects that were, uh, we initially thought were involved in a burglary of a, of a habitation. San Antonio police say it was actually the car the suspects were driving that got their attention. The officers were doing their investigation and so forth. Uh, determined that the vehicle was stolen. Police say after they came across the car, that's when the driver took off. Fortunate our Eagle helicopter was uh, able to uh, um, follow the vehicle. Ironically, the driver ended up pulling in here, right at the SAPD Central Patrol Station near the magistrate's office. We were monitoring the radios, and uh, as we were monitoring the radios, it just pulled into here, so we all came outside. Police found several items inside the car, and unlike the car itself, those items were not stolen. For lack of a better choice, where they pulled in here and gave up. Now, it is unclear if both the suspects found in the car will face the same charges. However, San Antonio police did say those charges will consist of theft of a vehicle and evading arrest. Jaffney Gray, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jaffney. Turning to more local top stories today, San Antonio police arresting three juveniles following an officer involved shooting this afternoon. That shooting taking place around 3 p.m. in the 1200 block of Lombrano Street. That's where officers spotted the three suspects in a stolen gray SUV and began following them. Police say after a short chase, one of the juveniles fired at an officer. All three eventually got out of the vehicle and the officer returned fire, hitting one of those suspects in the foot. Police say all three are now facing a charge of aggravated assault and more charges could be coming. The officer who shot the minor has been placed on administrative duty pending an investigation. Police say an argument over a woman is what sparked gunfire between two men on the south side. The shooting happened around 1.30 this morning on Harland Avenue. Police say one man drove away after the argument and was driving on Flanders Avenue when he was shot in the arm. He was taken to University Hospital and is expected to recover. The investigation is ongoing, but police say that victim is being uncooperative. Two people are in the hospital following a high speed crash on the south side on the southeast side. Rather, the crash happened just after 1 a.m. on Roland Avenue. Police say the driver lost control and rolled the vehicle several times before landing in some trees. A passenger was ejected and the driver trapped inside he had to be cut out using the jaws of life. Police say both men are in serious condition tonight. It is still unclear what caused the driver to lose control. Police, though, are looking into whether or not alcohol may have been a factor. Meanwhile, another driver in a separate accident is dead after losing control and crashing into a pole on the west side overnight. Police say the driver was on West Commerce when he crashed around 12.30 a.m. The driver was pronounced dead at the scene. Police say he was in his 50s or 60s, and they do not suspect alcohol was a factor in the crash. Back to our coronavirus coverage, Brazoria County health officials announcing today two presumptive positive cases of COVID-19. Both people live together in the Alvin area. Officials say the two did not travel outside of Houston, but did attend the rodeo cook-off 
and other events. The Brazoria County Health Department is conducting an investigation to identify other people who may have come in contact with them. According to the Texas Department of State Health Service, there are now 51 confirmed cases across the state. Here at home, District 8 City Councilman Manny Palaez will undergo a self-quarantine after returning tomorrow from a family trip in Colombia. Although none of them are experiencing any symptoms, out of an abundance of caution and after receiving a directive from the city manager, Palaez will be self-quarantining for 14 days. He says he still plans to participate in City Council meetings from home through video conference. You can read his full statement online right now at ksat.com. Um, at risk of collapsing. That's how officials are describing our blood supply. The South Texas Blood and Tissue Center announced that they've seen a severe drop in donations just in the last few days and lives could be impacted. The night team Stephen Cavazos now with how city leaders are responding. City leaders rolling up their sleeves to donate blood at the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center. Officials with the center say concerns over the coronavirus has led to a drop in donations. San Antonio Mayor Ron Nirenberg wants to remind the community the process is still safe. Because the most important thing we're trying to do is make sure that our, our medical system has all the resources and capacity it needs. The center says it must collect at least 400 units of blood daily to help patients. But officials say in the last three days, the center has seen a 1,600 unit drop. As blood drives are canceled and donations decline, local health officials say they're anticipating a major blood shortage in the Alamo City. Nuremberg reminding people their donations are as important as ever. Just think about where this blood will go to someone who, whose life depends on it. Still, the center has taken precautions. Donors who come in will have their temperatures checked and are being asked additional questions regarding health and travel. Obviously, if your temperature is spiked, they're not going to let you go. They're going to ask you to leave. Idani Motavo, who came in to donate today, says she's on board with the changes, which she considers necessary. I noticed that they had a, one of their employees with gloves, wiping down everything, which is totally understandable, especially with everything that's going on right now. This woman asked us not to show her face, but wanted to share the same message. Susan says she hasn't donated in 15 years. She says she felt the need to come in and give, and she encourages others to do the same. The same people that are afraid to give the blood might need blood, so they ought to think of it that way. Now, the center did say today they received about 430 donations, but keep in mind they need about 400 on a daily basis to help those patients in need. They say they're still in need of critical, or they're in critical need, that is, of donations. They have three locations that will be open tomorrow. You can head over to our website, ksat.com, for more information. Tim, Courtney. Thank you, Stephen. Life-saving information. Uh, Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar also announcing a COVID-19 preparation plan. University Hospital System staff will pre-screen all prisoners before they enter the jail. Any prisoners showing flu-like symptoms will be booked and housed separately. Inmates cleared will be sent to a hand-washing station before entering the processing center. BCSO is encouraging other law enforcement agencies to use site and release when necessary. The sheriff's office will attempt to handle non-emergency calls by phone instead of dispatching deputies, and they will work to minimize custodial arrests by filing non-violent offenses at large. They'll also work to reduce the jail population by coordinating with the courts to maximize the use of GPS releases for sentenced prisoners. The work release program will also be suspended until further notice. Schools and universities across Bear County have canceled classes and are extending spring break out of caution of over the coronavirus. Right now at ksat.com, we've compiled a complete list of every school closure so far. That includes local universities, which have either extended breaks for students, asked students to move out of on-campus housing, or both. You can find the list under the coronavirus tab on our homepage at ksat.com. And once you're there on that same page, you can find a link to see which San Antonio area schools will still be providing food to students during this week's closures. Several schools have made arrangements to provide curbside meal service. But times and campuses do vary. You can find the specifics for your child's school by clicking the school's name at the bottom of the page. We will make it through these trying times that may occur over the following weeks and months. May all of these efforts help us to slow the spread of COVID-19. The Archdiocese of San Antonio has canceled all Catholic public masses in parishes and other chapels today and tomorrow. And they're not the only ones. Several other faiths canceling service tomorrow morning as well, and some for an even longer period of time. You can find an updated list online at ksat.com. When adults panic, 
Kids Panic. That's why we're also encouraging parents, teachers, and students to check out our KSAC Kids newsletter to learn how to help calm children's fear about coronavirus. Not only that, we've also provided links to help kids learn best hand washing practices and how to take advantage of this extra time away from school, like trying out one of meteorologist Katie Blake's cool science experiments. You can sign up for our KSAT Kids newsletter at any time at ksat.com slash newsletters. And finally, we love to know what coronavirus related questions you have. You can submit those questions anytime on ksat.com. We'll take your submissions to local experts in an effort to get you the best explanations possible. You can also find answers to questions we've already answered on our SAQ page. Looking outside with live cam tonight, still 75.